Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks. In this video, we're going to be talking about tab panels and slide controls. So these are very similar widgets that we have in the FileMaker that are very important for user interface. So here's how they work. So this is the tab panel we're looking at right here for this uh, one record. And you have uh, different tabs that go back and forth. So then back in the day, these used to be really hard to make, and you had to kind of have multiple layouts for them. But now there's just been, for the last several versions of FileMaker, um, a really easy way to make these. And you can just make a new tab by clicking on your uh, tab control and then adding another one called another one. Click Create and make one. And then it's there. If I go to Browse Mode, it's just there. You can also change the order of them very easily um, by just clicking on it in the layout and then moving it around. And then now it's part of the interface and that new location. Another feature that's really important with them is you can delete them really easily. Uh, just click Delete. And the last thing I'm going to show is that's a really good feature um, before we actually talk about making them and some of the differences between the tab control and a slider is that they're actually, the label can be a calculation. So for example, on the invoices one here, as I'm looking through my different records, some of them have a different number of invoices, and I kind of want to see at a glance how many invoices they have. How do I do that? Here is how. Go back to layout mode, double click on my tab widget, and in the where it says invoices, I'm going to actually click to the specify button here, and this is the calculation dialog in FileMaker. So I'm going to put invoices, and then I'm going to add a calculation, which is the count of the invoices. So that's the customer invoice ID. So I'll count the number of IDs, and then it will show that number. Um, so let's just start with that, and we'll iterate and see how, what, what little changes we're going to make. So first of all, when you do that, you have to remember to click Rename, because if you just click OK, it will not save it. So Rename, OK, and then back to Browse Mode. So now as I flip through, I can see that it shows, except it doesn't really quite work because I didn't put a space in. And it's also possible that I have a record that has no invoices. So let's actually just delete one here. Um, and if there's no invoices, it actually, it still shows one. That's actually strange. It shouldn't. Oh, I think I was on the wrong, I was on the wrong tab. So let me delete this one invoice and uh, I'll see. It, it, what happens here. So it says invoice is zero, and I don't want it to say zero. I want it to be something else. So how do I do all that? Back to layout mode, double click on my tab, choose the tab I want to change, click specify, and I'm going to put a case statement here. So case, if the count of the invoices is zero, um, then I can either put like invoices none yeah, something like that, right, in brackets. Um, maybe it would be a really unusual thing to have no invoices here. Otherwise, um, if the count is not zero, then I can put a, a space and then just the count of the invoices again. So I'm referring to the same little math twice, but that's perfectly fine. So now I have that logic in that will then say none if there's none, and then um, give me the count. I could do some other things here, like text formatting. Um, actually, what maybe would be really nice, and maybe we'll, I'll do it while I'm thinking about it, is I, I maybe want to put the number of invoices in parentheses. So I'll just put an open parentheses here and a close parentheses here so that I can see them um, directly. Remember to click Rename, OK, and Browse Mode. And on this record that has no invoices, it says none in brackets. And if there's invoices, it actually shows me uh, the count of them. All right, pretty good, right? So how do I make a slider? And how are sliders differently, uh, work differently than invoices? And then we're going to talk about a script that, that navigates you to one, because you might want to actually go to a specific panel, a specific tab. Um, so let's make a new layout. I'll just start a new one here and call it test. It's going to be in the same context of customer. And 
I'll put some fields on there. And maybe some of these fields, like the address fields, I want them to be inside of the uh, panel. So to make a tab panel, um, I skipped kind of by that in the earlier one, there's a widget right here, and you can choose whether you want a tab control or a slide control. So if I choose tab control, and I can just draw a box, um, I can name my tabs. And if I do the exact same thing, but I go down to slider and make another box of a similar size, it comes up with my slide control setup. And then it automatically gives me three, um, I call these pips, but they're really panes or, um, and a slide control and a tab control really are the same in terms of how things work. So in other words, if I said I wanted the address field on there, on the first one, I can copy that to the one here. And then if I switch to the second tab or switch to the second pip, no, it will have nothing on there. So that also works in, uh, in browse mode. So let me go back to browse mode and I can click this. One important thing um, that I, I want to note is why would you use one or these or the other of these widgets? And there are two primary things that I would say that, that you should know. One is mainly um, it's targeted for the operating system that you're looking at. So if you're building um, for the desktop or for WebDirect, the, the tab panel is the more natural object. It's what people are expecting to see. They're used to, they're used to seeing tabs and everything else that they work with out on the web. But on iOS, tabs are weird. So it's a, there's a very small target to tap onto. And, and on the panel, if you see this, users kind of know to just swipe. So you can just click anywhere with their, with their finger and swipe across it left and right. Notice also that we get this animation that sort of comes along automatically. Well, that's very native uh, for iOS. So that's the main thing. The second thing is um, the tabs can, can be, or the, the slider panels can, can be very easily made invisible. So you can, when I go back to layout mode here, if I don't want these pips to be visible, I can easily um, hide them by just saying, don't show navigation dots. Hey, I've been calling them pips, but their proper name is navigation dots. And then I don't get to see them. So that means the user can't navigate. They can't actually go from one to another uh, of the panes. You'd have to have some other way to do that. And that's often useful. So let's say I have a company record that could sometimes be an employee and sometimes be a vendor. And if it's employee or a vendor, I want different things to show. Um, so like on the employee part, I, I want to show the address, but if it's a vendor, then I want to see the phone numbers. Um, and I want that to be automatic upon loading of the record. Um, so that would be a really good re a reason to use a slide control that doesn't have navigation dots and has some clean way to get to one or the other uh, pane. So I need a way then uh, with a script to navigate to my paint. So let me show you a, little, a couple little tricks here. So um, for one, I can use the naming in FileMaker. And I'll show you kind of what you'd think would work, but maybe doesn't work. So the first tab, I'll just give it the name first. And the second tab, I'll give it the name second. I'll put some fields on here just so we can have something. So that first and second actually have some things on there. So you would think that if I had a script that said go to object second, I'm a little bit off screen here, go to object second, and I'll put that um, on a button so we can see that working. Make a button. I always use button bars for my buttons. I'll just call it test, and it's going to run the script. Sliders and tabs. Oh, I called it tans, but we'll fix that in a minute. So it actually does go to my second tab, which is great. And that will also work for this down here. So if I click on my slider, and I'm going to name these objects um, as well. So I'll go to the name area and call them pip1. 
and pip2. We'll just use those for now. Um, FileMaker, by the way, will not allow you to, ta to have two objects with the same name. So if I try to go to this one and call it pip2, and I already have a pip2, it comes up with an error and says, hey, you, you, can't, you can't do that. Provide a unique name. OK, but I've made one and two. And then I'm going to go to my script. I'm going to fix my egregious spelling error because I care about you guys, and I just can't do something like that. Um, sliders and tabs. And now I'm going to say, go to object pip2. Note that these are not case sensitive. Not a lot of functions in FileMaker are case sensitive. But in some of the other videos you've seen uh, that from us, you've known learned that the JSON functions, which are great, are case sensitive. OK, so now this button is going to go to pip2. So if I click it, it should go directly to pip2. And it does. Um, so I'm going to then click on this slider and say, don't show navigation dots. Now my default slider can't actually be set here. It's just going to be the first one. But the default tab can be set. So that's another one of the differences between them is you can actually set it. Um, so go back to browse mode, and it defaults me to the first tab. And if I click test, it goes to pip2, even though I can't see it. So that script can be called on record load. It could be called from some button. Um, and so it's nice because you can basically say, I've got a bunch of different types of data that I, could, that I might want to show in different situations on this record. And you can easily do that um, for this video. Thanks very much for your time. Have a great day.